Hi folks, we're going to review some of the uh, basic concepts uh, that you'll need to know for the uh, Unit 4 test that's coming up. Uh, so the first uh, basic thing that we learned was the concept of uh, relation. Okay, now relationship was just a way of relating two different uh, values or two different quantities. And the simplest way of describing that was just a set of ordered pairs. Okay. Now it could be uh, a finite set of ordered pairs, two, three, four points, or it could be infinitely many ordered pairs, uh, like on a line. There's infinitely po many points that are on a line. Now there's a special type of relation that we talked about, which is called a function. And a function is just a relation, okay? but it's a relation that has one very important quality. Okay, for every input, there can be only one output. Okay, so we'll say where every input, okay, which we think of as our x values, has only one output. Okay, and the output being our y values. So, if we look at uh, an example here, if I were to draw this graph, Okay, we see that for any x value that I choose, there's one and only one output. Okay, for any x value that I choose. Okay, now don't forget that the set of all x values is called the domain. So for any domain value or for any input, there's always only one output function, uh, output value. So this is a function. Okay, however, if I look at this oval here that would not be a function because if I take a look at say this x value there's two different y values, two different outputs uh, that are related to that input value so that would not be a function. Okay. In particular we looked at linear functions. Okay. So that's probably the most important thing that we'll be studying throughout the year that you'll need in uh, quite a few topics in grade 10. Okay, so let's start with the equation. Okay, and we actually had two equations that we used to work with linear functions. So we had the original y equals mx plus b, which is the slope intercept form. <coughs> and that's because within the equation one finds the slope, okay, which we also refer to as the rate of change. So how the y's change every time x goes up by 1. And then this b value also gives us information. It gives us the intercept. In particular, this gives us the y-intercept. So please don't confuse the x-intercept and the y-intercept. This is the one that hits the y-axis. Okay. And in applications, we also often, sorry, often think of this as the initial value, the value when uh, the x value is 0. So often the x value is rep representing time. So that's why it makes sense to call it the initial value. Now the other form of the equation which we learned just recently is the point slope form. So that's useful if we want to quickly write down the equation when we know the slope and we know one specific point uh, on the line. Okay, so yet again m represents the slope. Okay, and these two values, what we call x0 and y0, represent a known point on the line. So this is a known point on the line. Oops, let's just show you here. Make some room. A known point on the line. Okay, so let's now go to the table of values. Now, table of values, in terms of determining whether something is linear or not, much easier when the x values are going up by the same amount. So, for example, if I have my x values, say, going up by 4, 0, 4, 8, 12, okay, so always going up by 4, then I can easily determine whether this is a linear relation, because if the y values go up or down, 
by the same amount. So let's say in this scenario here, they go down by 5, so 20, 15, 10, and 5. They're always going down by the same amount. Every time x goes up by the same amount, then this is linear. Okay? But this also gives us inadvertently a way of determining the rate of change or the slope. Because here, this represents delta y. And this represents delta x. So the change in the y's, the change in the x's, and that's how we can define the slope. An alternative way of defining the slope, instead of saying how much y changes every time x goes up by 1, we can always divide okay, the change in y over the change in x. Now, if we were to divide these two numbers, that would give us that unit rate, the rate of change uh, that the slope is equal to. <clears throat> so, let's uh, now take a look at the graphs. So, not surprisingly, the graph of a linear function, well, is just a line. Now, how do we think of the slope? Again, we think of needing two points, okay? And we have to find that delta y over delta x. Delta y is the changes in the y as I go from one point to the next over the change in the x. So this is our delta y. This is our delta x. Now on a graph, it's nice to think of this in other terms. So this is what we call the rise, okay? the change in the vertical. Now, of course, rise could also include dropping down. Okay, so that would give us a negative rise going downwards instead of upwards. Okay, and here delta x, the change in the x values, is what we call the rise. Now, there's two special lines that we looked at. Okay, first one would be a horizontal line. So let's just recall what was special about uh, horizontal lines. Okay, so if we take an example, a horizontal line, say that passes through 4. Okay, we realize that when we try to calculate the slope, that there was no change in y when x increased by 1. No matter how much we increased x, y never changed. So we found that the slope here was equal to 0. So when we put that into our equation, y equals 0x plus b, whatever that happens to be. In this case here, it happens to be 4. I get an equation of this form. y is equal to whatever the y-intercept is. Okay, So it still is technically in the form y equals mx plus b. The slope just happens to be 0, which means this whole expression disappears. Okay, Now, when we get to vertical lines, this is where things are a little different. Okay, so first thing to remember is that a vertical line is not even a function. Okay, because here, oops, let's move that up for you there. For this x value of infinitely many y values, you mean more infinitely many outputs for that one input. So first of all, this is not a function. So that's the only linear relation that's not a function. Okay? But we still want an equation, so we don't expect it to be in the form y equals mx plus b, since it's not even a function. But what we realize, similar to what we had with a horizontal line, where the y value was always the same, here it's the x value that's always the same. So the way in which we define it is we say x is equal to, well, what value does it always take on? In this case, 3. Okay? Uh, the last thing I just want to remind you of is this idea of uh, partial and direct variation. And really, there's not much to say about this here. Okay, so what's special about a direct variation, okay, is that it passes through 0, 0. So if we take a look at the graph, it's any line that passes through the origin. Now, if it passes through the origin, that means that the y-intercept is equal to 0. So b is equal to 0. So the equation will just look like some number times x. Okay? And then we've got a partial variation. And the only thing that's special about a partial variation is that it doesn't pass through 0, 0. 
passes through any other point on the y-axis. Okay, so that's what we call a partial variation. So here, b is not equal to zero. So in a question, if they happen to mention that the function is a partial variation, you know that there's an initial value that's not equal to zero. And if they tell you that it's a direct variation, you know that it has to pass through zero as well. Okay, so folks, please uh, study well for this test.